so now we're going to create a duplicate of this water layer one more time and that's going to be our displacement layer okay so we'll probably use something more along the lines of the medium the medium lights um, because we want a lot of displacement in general and now it doesn't have to match exactly to the highlights but it does help if it matches to the highlights because then it feels I don't know, it feels a little more realistic, I guess. So we'll drop this in. So I'm going to duplicate this. Now this one, we're not going to see. Uh, and we might actually, we're going to have to pre-compose this as well with a camera because we need this water layer here to actually drive a distortion. So we need to pre-compose this with a camera in its own little scene. So we'll just go like this. We'll just see vol attributes into new composition. And we'll call this water effects displace and then comp. And what we're going to do with this, this guy here, is we'll actually put a, a duplicate of the camera in there. I think because this camera has the expressions all over it, this one should anyway. Yeah, it does. Um, we can just delete this animation. We'll just, we just have to copy this camera. We can just copy it normally by pressing Control C and go in here and we can paste it. And then this will we'll have a perfect matchup. So this is actually going to be our displacement layer. So we also don't want to have the tint effect on it. It's unnecessary. And we want this to be normal here. And let's just check its transparency, put it to 100%. And we'll probably make the background black as well. So we're, the displa displacement map is going to take the black value and the white value. The white will hopefully be our highest level of displacement. And then our black will be our lowest. And we're going to generalize this even further by reducing the contrast. So if we go into Final Comp, it should be sitting right there. We can just turn it off because we're not going to actually be looking at it. And then so what we'll do here is hopefully this works. We can go to distort and we're going to take a displacement map. Uh, we go displacement map and I'm just going to use the luminance values and the lightness. I, I don't know if this actually, uh, but what this will do is this is going to actually add a nice distortion for us. We'll move it in a way that's helpful. Now the trouble with this is you actually do get the edges the it doesn't wrap the edges so typically when i'm doing a reflection shot like this i'll make the scene bigger bigger than hd so that you can deal with this kind of thing you need to have your your scene bigger than hd but we're not going to worry about this right now so what should happen uh, let's just take a look we'll use look at the so and then up here in the top of the actual effects box, if you look at the top, there's the layer that actually drives the displacement. I want to make sure that's the reflection layer that we made. It's causing a displacement. We're actually seeing it moving. We have a sense of the water actually moving here. So could probably go a little bit further. We want to take the actual displacement comp and smooth out this displacement map. So it's even more encompassing. So we want it, the brightness to be right up, to be up even more. Want the contrast to be lower. Drop that contrast a lot because we want it to be pretty soft, um, kind of billowy um, by comparison. We don't want a lot of displacement going on. Like there's just, you can probably bring the complexity down a bit and just let this be really cloudy. Drop that contrast even more. Drop it even more. And that, that lowering of the contrast will make it a little bit more just soft. Um, so now we can go back into the final comp and have a look. And so let's just turn on the reflection and see what's happening here. So you can see there's actually a displacement map affecting the water itself or the reflection. One thing I actually forgot to try in the clip in the actual displacement map composition is you could, you could add a blur to it. So like you could add a fast blur or a Gaussian blur to it, and that will smooth out the deformations even more and even broaden them. So it might look even a bit better. So that's something you could try to. Anything you do inside of there will actually affect the deformations of the water surface. So things are off to a nice start. One of the problems that could be hap that could happen too when you have it shift over is that you might get undesirable um, an undesirable placement. So sometimes you have to offset this just a little bit. So you'll move this over a little bit and down just to center it a little bit better. I want it to look decent. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. So then the last, the last step here, well, this isn't the last step quite yet, but on top of that, what you can do is you can add another turbulent displace uh, distortion. 
uh, or, you know, whatever you want. There's like, there's a tons of things you can do, but I usually use like the, um, uh, the turbulent displace here. So let's just find it. Okay. And then we'll just set its, uh, offset. Oh, actually you don't want to do the offset. I'm not going to worry about the offset, but maybe the evolution. I'm just going to alt click that. And I'm just going to say time times let's go 300 enter. Okay. That should, okay, time times 300. So what that'll do is obviously that'll that'll make this whole thing move. It's too big, so the size has to come way down. And maybe let's go to 10. And the amount could probably be 25. And maybe we'll bring the size up to 25 as well. Let's just have a look at how that feels. Another option with the placement of the effects is you could actually create an adjustment layer and move these effects that you have on the bottom layer here. You can move them up to the adjustment layer. That's not necessary, but uh, sometimes I like to keep stuff separate and not have it sitting right on top of the layer. The other thing that we want to do with this is, which also adds to the believability of it all, is we can add a blur so if you want to do a blur and you want to do like a we can add like a lens blur to it so we go here and let's find where is it uh camera lens blur the what you can do with this is you can actually use the the actual displacement comp here as your lens blur so if we put this that's fine so then what we want to do is just take pick a, a blur layer which is the actual water effects displacement and what that'll do is wherever it's the brightest it'll be the most blurry uh, you can invert that so that the bright spots are the sharpest it's really up to you and you can change the amount of blur in your scene so we'll put this to like 50 and I, I mean this again this is just going to use the actual if so if we take this layer and this layer you're going to see that it actually blurs based on the displacement map and not just doesn't just overall blur the whole thing Okay, so I'm just trying to actually get this to work properly here. You can also get some really nice fringing effects happening on the water. It's pretty cool if you want to just play with it. And I put the roundness to 100. I'm just trying to, the only thing I'm trying to nail down here is my actual focus distance. I don't want it to be, I think what's happening right now is we're getting an overall blur everywhere. I want to make sure that my blur, let's just invert it see what happens because I want my blur mostly to be happening in the highlights so we just adjust it till it feels good okay and uh, you probably want to do this at a higher like half or a little bit higher but anyways we're starting to get some really neat effects there right? and I think it actually starts looking pretty good so we'll just turn that off for now. So we have like little patches of blurriness and then patches of clarity. This can work really cool when you're underwater and you're if you're moving the camera and you want to create sort of that uh, refractive density that changes as the water moves, to, or even you know like like air, air like distorting a surface, hot air. But you can start seeing how this is all really working. It's starting to look really nice. It's starting to feel a little bit more painterly and natural. We're getting some cool, unexpected results there. The next step is then actually creating the surface of the water, which all this reflective stuff will sit on top of. Okay, so now that um, we have the, the water reflection in there, everything is looking pretty good. The, the only thing we don't have is we don't really have... We have to kind of get some kind of a color for the water. And uh, the other thing I wanted to point out is that we could also make a water displacement for darkness, uh, which we don't have either. Um, so we have a highlight and we have a medium light. We could do low lights or like shadows. So I'll just go low light. And what I'll do here is we can just invert, I think. Let's just see how this works. Invert, we'll put it to that. And I think I want to blur this out a bit. So let's go blur. Let's go Gaussian blur. I mean, you could do fast blur too, I think. And then what we'll do is we'll then use that as a to darken things. So let's just see how this looks. I'm not really sure how it's going to look in all honesty. My hope with this is to, uh, let's just duplicate this, is to actually create sort of shadowed areas or dips in the water. And we can use these as dark spots. So. I'll also, instead of my blending being an add, I'll do it as a multiply. And we'll drop the opacity way down. 
Let's put it to like 50%. And then what we can also do on top of that is get rid of the, the mapping of the white and we'll map it to kind of a purple color. Um, so let's map our white to this, maybe to a white, like just map it to pure white because we want it to be transparent. And then this just kind of a purpley color. And then let's just see, see what we get out of this. What we should have is we should be leaving the highlights alone, but we might have to increase the contrast on the low lights here actually a bit more. Just increase that contrast and then reduce the brightness a little bit. So hopefully we can create sort of deep spots in it. So let's just close some of these out. Okay, let's see what this does. It's, I think it's overall, we're, overall we just have too much of it. Maybe I'll reduce the blur a bit. I think we could possibly actually even use, let's just take, get rid of Gaussian blur because I feel like that's just a little too processor heavy and you can use fast blur. We're not doing anything wild here other than just trying to. So let's just see, I think what I'm seeing here is our light areas, they're not actually inverting very well because you see where our highlights are going? They're going on the darkest spots. We need it actually to be the opposite. So let's go in here and we'll invert it, put it back to inverted. Okay, so now we want to do a multiply on this. That's right. Like we don't really need to invert it. But what we do need to do is expand how big these things are. So let's just turn the blurring off for now. Really reduce the contrast and increase the brightness for now and then sort of bring it up until it feels bring the brightness up and then bring that contrast up. I want it to be pretty soft, but we want the dark areas to be a little bit low. We don't want too much dark in there. Let's just bring the brightness up a little more. And then contrast up a bit more. And bring the brightness down. And then brightness up even more. We are getting like what we're looking for. Just probably a little too much of it. So it will create, it should which it seems to be doing is it is creating a little bit of depth in that water. Like we're getting some darker spots, which is ultimately what we want to see how it's feeling. Hopefully it's not too much. And on top of that, because we are using that displacement map and solution and everything that we're doing, the, the darks and the lights should correspond with the actual deformation of the image underneath. So we should have this fairly believable like water simulation going on. So ultimately the next step is just to create one of these water layers here and just use it as a color. Um, you can put a gradient on it as well. It, it can really be anything. You're just going to take this black solid and we'll just duplicate it this one more time. Replace it with this black solid. And then we can just tint this whatever color we want. So I'll just, uh, and because it's black, can really just pick a color and then that will tint the water. You, The other thing that's really nice that I sometimes do is I'll actually just use it, you can use an actual texture, uh, like a, something that has like a paper texture to it or something like that. And that can be really nice actually in getting the look that we want. So this too also, we want this to be under normal. And if it's at normal, we can just adjust its transparency. And that's gonna slowly push that image back a little bit Let's go 25. And just, we want to get it so that it feels like water, I guess. I mean, it'd be nice to use a texture on that. Like you could use any texture really. Um, but then you, you do have to add your dis distortions and stuff like that. You could put it under the displacement layers here, these filters here, and that will help sell the effect. So what we could also do is if we grab so we can go into the actual community assets here. And I have these washes. And I think we could use some of those if you wanted instead. And that would give us texture, at least, on the water's surface. And then uh, we would really have to play with our tints and stuff like that to get it so it feels good. So now we have this sort of like textured water layer here, which should be influenced by the deformers and things like that. And then, you know, it could also, you know, it could be a bit too much. It could be, 
but you know it's something that adds a little bit so now let's just take a look at it i think like it's something you can play with a lot i feel like we have possibly too many highlights and stuff like that or, or maybe there's a little bit too much going on in the water surface and that that could be being caused by either some of the darkness let's have a look at it like it might be the dark that's a little bit too much but really it's just all about taste at this point it's just kind of getting it so that it, until it feels nice for you and feels just believable i guess is the main goal here so i'm just going to render this out for a second but i'd say like overall it's it's feeling pretty nice the the other thing you can do is because these are big giant flat layers you can fade off uh, the highlights and stuff so that they're not the same intensity all the way back. If you want to, what you can do is um, put a layer mask that's actually just at the back here and it just fades out the image. So we can just take the feathering on that and just, you know, increase it so it fades as it gets further from the camera. If you, you know, if you're, if you want it to be a little bit more believable, the other option is when you start actually doing the, um, oh, it looks like we went the wrong way with it. When you actually start doing a little bit of the depth past layers and things like that, you can, you can control that a little bit more. Um, let's move it the other way. Make sure we're going the right way with it. Okay, cool. I think that's looking pretty good for now. Like, I think we've covered the basics of what this reflection idea can do. You can obviously expand on this and take it to all kinds of different levels. And I think you can see the results are pretty decent. I think I would, I would spend a little more time tweaking the actual look of the water's surface. You could even, if you really wanted to get into it, you could create layers beneath like rocks and other things where you kind of see through the water as well. You can extend the scene down and it would still work. So it's, it's actually a really exciting process. There's a lot you can do with it. So if you, you know, when you're looking at some of the stuff we did with monster fish, you can see how far some of this stuff can be taken. I think we're actually just scratching the surface on this. I think we could go a lot further and try a whole bunch of things with this. I'm excited to see what you guys come up with. There's probably a bunch of ways this process could be made easier. So if you have any thoughts or ways that it could be improved, just uh, leave a comment in the comment thread below and all of us can benefit from that. And uh, thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it and I appreciate the continued support and patience. I'm really excited for the stuff coming up.